Now it's time for the gladiators in the arena. So, you guessed it, AI Idol. All right, so this is the third annual. Um, and there was a pool of 50, I'm sorry, uh, 30 submissions. Uh, we have five gladiators here today. Or is it four? We have four, one has already been eliminated. We have four gladiators here today. All right. Um, we have, I will introduce them one at a time. Uh, we also have a panel of esteemed judges Perfect. who I believe are right this one. there. Right? Okay. Um, I will introduce them. All right. We've got uh, uh, Darian Shirazi, uh, general partner of Gradient Ventures. Please raise your hand. All right, Darian. Uh, we got Rohini. Uh, Shakravarthi, general partner, NG, okay, NGP Capital. We got Raviraj Jain, general partner, Lightspeed Ventures. Okay, fantastic. We got Ashu Garg, general partner, Foundation Capital. All right, and this last one's a doozy. Jason Scott. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> Did I pronounce that right? I got that one right. All right, Jason Scott. <laughs> Jason Scott, uh, Global Startup Partners at Google. Uh, my name is Mark Kramer. I'm the MC, obviously. Um, I uh, actually am the director of the Startup Mentoring Service um, with the MIT Club in Northern California. And so, okay, we have cash and prizes. Um, actually, we have no cash, we've got prizes. <laughs> All right, so uh, the winner will receive this. I don't, you probably can't see this, uh, but you probably know all the digits, 3.141592626, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it says MIT, it's awesome. Uh, I thought this was a gift for the MC. It's not, it's a prize for the winner. So we're gonna put that right there. All right, we also have this lovely bag from NVIDIA. A lovely bag from, but it's heavy. Oh, I wonder what's inside. Oh, this is heavy too. It's a Titan V. All right, I know it's a five. All right, it's a Titan five. <laughs> and uh, actually, Jason, uh, did you want to? So you've got a prize too. Happy to, yeah. You want to tell the prize? Is your mic on? Is I Jason's mic on? on? No, but I oh, oh, okay. Awesome. So um, we're happy to announce that for all the winners, we'll um, have el they'll be eligible to join our Google Cloud for Startups program, which includes a uh, hundred thousand dollars in Google Cloud credits, um, access to um, technical support, Googlers from around um, the company, including uh, Alphabet companies like Gradient. Um, and yeah, we're excited to work with you and support you. So. Okay. okay so those are some generous gifts. Um, I should have pointed out that that's for the winner. So. Obviously, there's only one, right? You can't share it. Um, okay, so uh, here's how it's gonna work. Uh, we'll have the five uh, gladiators come up one at a time. You get four minutes. At the end of four minutes, a trap door opens up right behind this podium and you fall into a pit of crocodiles. So make sure you finish at four minutes. After that, we're gonna do two minutes of, uh, is it Q&A or is it just feedback? I think they said feedback. I suppose you could ask a question if you wanted to. We can do whatever we want. We're adults, right? If you want to ask, no? N just feedback? Who can stop them if they answer, ask a question? No one can stop them. You guys can do whatever you want. You're the judges, right? Your rules. All right. So um, let's start with number one. We've got um, locomotion. I'm not going to pronounce this correctly. I'm going to make it. Uh, you already know. You already know <laughs> I'm not. Uh, okay. Ketten Merkili. That's not fine. even close. That's All fine. right. That's it. I'll, I'll answer to should, that. Should I? Uh, is he mic'd up? Okay. All right, I'm mic'd All right, up. I, I'm going to leave. All right. Okay. There's, the timer's on the... All right. All right. When you start, I guess it starts. Good luck. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Uh, right, I'm Chetan Mirichli. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Locomation. <coughs> Let's see if this thing works. Okay. It does not. Anyways. Uh, so, um, is, it, is, he, hello, is he mic'd up? Ah, there you go. Is, is his mic working? Okay, okay. So, all right, let's do it. Okay, so my slides are not working. Maybe I'll just say next slide. 
Um, as I said, I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of Locomation, and Locomation builds self-driving trucks with a very particular uh, approach to autonomy and with a very aggressive timeline to uh, deploy at co large-scale commercial uh, trucking industry. So trucking industry is massive. Uh, it's uh, the backbone of our economy with uh, approximately two-thirds of all the goods being transported by trucks, and such a massive industry comes with massive challenges. Some of the big challenges today are the increasing driver shortage, especially in the long haul trucking, and a related driver attrition problem. Historically, uh, razors in profit margins, even the largest trucking fleets, can only realize three to five percent uh, profits. And uh, despite being a very, very capital intensive industry, ex extremely low uh, asset utilization rates, around 30 percent industry wide. The solution will come from decoupling labor from the capacity through vehicle autonomy. And Locomation is building the world's first commercial-grade uh, autonomous system, and uh, we are deploying it in phases. We believe in the lean startup philosophy. It's all about building the right minimum viable product and get to the market as soon as possible, get to the revenue as soon as possible, and then quickly iterate there. Therefore, our uh, go-to-market approach is, we are coming a little bit behind, anyways. So um, our first step, our first phase of getting to the market is uh, what we call Autonomous Relay Convoying, or ARC for short. Uh, ARC works this way. You have two trucks and you have two drivers. Two drivers drive the trucks manually through the urban miles, through the congested areas, and onto the freeways. Once on the freeways and the ARC system is engaged, the, lead, the driver in the front truck remains in control, but the driver in the lead truck just leaves the driver's seat and goes and rests as the follower uh, truck turns into a fully autonomous truck. <clears throat> what that means is, at any given point, there's only one active driver driving, but you have two trucks moving. The results are very impressive. The driver productivity is doubled, the equipment utilization is tripled, and there is a, a, an extra 8% fuel saving through reduction in the aerodynamic uh, drag. If I can go to the next slide. So the... Uh, yeah, let's, let's add on one minute. We are having technical difficulties here. Are this that's perfect. Okay. Uh, as I was saying, we are deep believers in the lean startup philosophy. And uh, it's all about building the right minimum my viable product, starting from there and rapidly iterating there. Our initial focus is to go with uh, big enterprise, large fleets, focus on dense uh, freight flow regions, and uh, just focusing on uh, getting the, the profitability and the, the ROI to the single fleets. And now from there on, we'll incrementally expand, go to multi-fleets, go to longer convoys, et cetera, and we won't stop until we actually cover the entire freight operation. And we have the team to uh, realize that it, this ambitious goal the uh, founding team uh, comes out of Carnegie Mellon's Robotics Institute with over 100 years of direct experience in building and deploying autonomous systems. Uh, we also, uh, the team members also spent significant times at places like JPL, Lockheed Martin, and Boeing. Also, the leadership uh, has decades of experience today in uh, logistics operations, logistics freight uh, analysis, and uh, truck fleet sales. So we cover the entire stack, not just the technical part, but the entire stack of making this dream a reality. Um, it's, at the end of the day, it's all about moving as fast as possible, but without breaking things, because in trucking, breaking things is horrible. Uh, and our, best, our team, with this unmatched amount of experience, uh, brings the fuel that, that enables us to go really fast. We are moving incomparably faster than any other com any, uh, competitive, uh, competition companies. And our laser focus on the right product and the right uh, market segment keeps us on track, keeps us focused, and just maintains a course so that we can actually get to the market and be the first company to deploy fully autonomous systems at commercial scale. Maybe if I can get to my last slide. Yes. So over the next couple of months, we are about to uh, make big, big announcements, big splashes. So uh, stay tuned and follow us on the social media. I'll also be around if, in case you have any questions. Uh, feel free to grab me. Thank you so much. OK, great job. So the judges, uh, hopefully you've organized amongst yourselves. Pass the mic around in two minutes for feedback.
hear me? There we go. Ah. Um, good job. Um, I, very, very, very clear in terms of the, the solution and the market. I think the only piece of feedback I would love to learn more about, and obviously if you have more time you probably could dive into, is around the customer acquisition, the retrofit process. And I know, noticed you said immediate ROI, um, but I was just curious to see some numbers around that, I guess, in terms of um, how much it actually costs for this fleet right. to retrofit right. and when do they actually experience that. Um, but yeah, good job overall. And, Awesome. So very impressive team and an you know, interesting idea. The question really is, there's a company called Peloton, which is using similar approach. And whenever I see this, it's like that's the first thing that comes to my mind. So it would have been useful to talk about how you are different there, mm -hmm. uh, given how much they've raised. And it's not like they have similar team backgrounds. OK. Yep, same. Uh, uh, good job on that. So uh, also a question on pilot, I mean, sorry, the driver retraining. Do, the, does the driver need to learn anything new about having yet another big truck behind him or her. And do, I, do I answer or? I don't know. Um, yeah. But is, is that, I can't, that would I can't, be, that I'm not going to tackle them. Go ahead and answer, answer the question. <laughs> that would be a question. The, the short yeah. answer is yes. The long answer is uh, there is some extra training, but not a whole lot. So we are devising an extra curriculum on top of the uh, commercial driver license education, but only to the extent that they, they learn how to operate and troubleshoot the system. Nothing more than that. So, so how much time we got left there? Clearly Peter. a large market, you know, very impressive technical team. I think the uh, two things stood out for me as sort of areas for improvement. One is, you know, why are you different? I mean, whether it's Peloton or sort of, well, independent <laughs> of that, like it just wasn't obvious why, other than the fact that you have a lot of smart people in the team. Uh, and secondly, how do you sort of enter the market? Mm. Uh, it's a very complex market and, and getting your first dozen or so customers is going to be incredibly hard. And so figuring out how you do that and how you deal with regulation uh, was an obvious concern for me. Okay, so we'll start with Darian next time. For the next one, you'll be first. So you get, all right, thank you all so right. much. Oh, thank Appreciate you so much. it. Um, so, okay, uh, so George is coming up next. Did we have technical problems with the clicker? Was it not working? No, it's, it's good? It's good, okay, it's good. It is fixed, fantastic. We're all, um, you know, expert practitioners in AI. PowerPoint, maybe not so much. Okay, so uh, George Shaw, uh, uh, founder CEO of, of Brain the Store. So here's your clicker. Um, the timer is right there. So good luck. Thank you. <clears throat> See if I can get to my first slide. Because it's not working. No. Not working. Do we have slides? Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, can, can you reset back to four minutes, would you mind? Could you do that? <laughs> I don't know how that works. Okay, perfect, go. All right, look at that. Hi, I'm George, founder and CEO of Brain of the Store. We're building a spatial AI platform that transforms customer movement in brick and mortar stores into actionable insights and recommendations that retailers can use to manage the people and products moving through their stores. We're creating digital tools for physical stores. I began this journey at the MIT Media Lab, where I worked with Deb Roy on the Human Speech Ohm Project. This image that you're seeing from Deb's popular TED Talk, Birth of a Word, was a, an important early milestone that I helped to create. And it shows that location data combined with spatial intelligence could shed new light on how Deb's child came to learn language. My work at MIT transitioned from language acquisition to retail analytics when I began working with Bank of America and Best Buy, who were Media Lab sponsors at the time. When I left MIT, I joined industry leader Retail Next, where I ran the world-class R&D team. And in the words of Alexi, the CEO, uh, I built the tech that built that business. After Retail Next, went to a couple other startups where I ran our R&D and data science teams. And now I'm back in retail. We've built a fantastic advisory board and a small but mighty full-time team with deep retail expertise. So what's the problem that we're working to solve? Over 80% of transactions still take place in a brick and mortar store. Retailers are working hard to make these stores stay relevant and, to, and competitive against the incoming threats from Amazon and others. What's the one thing that you can't recreate online? In-person human interaction, the people. 
And it's those people, the staff and the customers moving through these stores, that we're working to understand, empower, and turn into superheroes using 21st century tools rather than old-fashioned clipboards and instincts. Making human interaction in retail stores better is worth a lot of money, it turns out. $1.7 trillion a year are lost by retailers because they can't effectively orchestrate in-store customer experience. On the X is our solution that helps guide store staff to be in the right place at the right time to improve that customer service dramatically. We can guide store staff to be in the right place at the right time to interact with customers and to conduct transactions which combined are worth $1.3 trillion a year globally to retailers. We can guide store staff to restock efficiently and effectively. Out of stocks are worth another $315 billion a year to retailers. And using our spatial AI to identify suspicious customers, we can guide store staff to address shoplifting and other types of fraud before they happen, worth another $57 billion a year to retailers. So how do we do this at scale in real time? Well, for us, everything starts with location data. Retailers are already generating a lot of this data in lots of different ways, and we work with all of them. But we're particularly excited about a solution we're creating together with a partner here in Silicon Valley, Pilot AI, to generate that location data from existing surveillance video. It's a really cool capability, and I'm proud to announce that we've just completed our first end-to-end -end prototype using existing surveillance from a global cosmetics retailer. That location data from whatever the source feeds in through our inbound API to our behavior engine, which is the brain. That's the core of what we do. It's a real-time, high-throughput data pipeline that houses our spatial AI and lets us address the various use cases that retailers care about. Results from the behavior engine flow out through our outbound API. We have a real-time component to drive in-store systems, as well as a historical component to do post-hoc analysis. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's who we are, what we're doing, and how we're doing it. Um, we've got a big vision, great plan to get there. So join us on this journey as we go and revolutionize brick and mortar retail. I'm George, founder and CEO of Brain of the Store. Thank you. All right, great job. Stay there. Um, oh, stay there. Can oh, we there's my last slide. There's the last slide. <laughs> it was a cool there one. I didn't want to miss it. I'll, I'll give you 10 seconds to talk about it if you want to. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. Uh, it's, it speaks it's, for it itself, speaks for itself. <laughs> frankly. Okay. Um, Go ahead, uh, uh, two minutes of uh, feedback. Is, it, is the mic on, the judge mic on? I don't think it's, oh, there, oh, there we go. go. Um, what are you using for edge detection, or how are you like pulling out the human from the video? So we're not doing any of the computer vision work. We're working with a, a company called Pilot AI, but it's a detection-based tracking system that uses a deep learning model to, uh, with a, a model of humans. And you're using that to identify like you know, whether it's an employee or, or something along those lines, or, or how are you determining? Em employee that? identification is another hard problem. Um, we're using spatial properties, where you go. If, you, if you're in the store for eight hours, you probably work there. If you're behind the cash wrap, you probably work there, and so on, as well as visual identifiers. Cool, thanks. Did I take a feedback? It was great. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a great feedback, and, and too, those, by the way. those yeah. were hard <laughs> questions, too. So Clearly a large problem, but I think the thing that really stood out in a positive way is that you have experience in the space. It's a complex space, and so the, the background of the team, I think, uh, made this special. Uh, I would say the big question for me would be, you know, figuring out how to segment the retailers and where do you sort of get in. I mean, it's, again, it's a very hard market to crack. It sounds like cosmetics retail sort of likes of Sephora is probably a good place for you to start. Based so far, so good there, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good presentation. Um, I think retail, people kind of are nervous whenever they, they hear the word retail. So the question um, I, I think that, I, that was running through my mind, which you might want to address in you know, future pitches, is just uh, in terms of what's happening in new retail, so digital natives, and whether you would work better with somebody who's planning a store from scratch, or whether it works um, inside big box stores that already exist, um, and just cover that up front. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So excellent presence and great presentation. I think the one thing in terms of feedback would be like when you talk about that you rely on pilot AI for your computer vision so like expertise, that is a little concerning because that's another startup that can get acquired or, or it can change their strategy. So be useful would have been useful to talk about how that is like a plug and play component where you can have others come in or have a strategy to work with many others. All right, thanks. That, that actually is the case. One of the Sorry, things I learned seconds. at MIT was how to go find the best people in the world at a thing, and that's what we went and did.
Um, great presentation. Um, I think the only thing that came to mind, and maybe it's because of the last panel, is um, thinking about um, potentially some of the ethical uh, questions around like surveillance and identification of shoplifters and those things. And that's, I think, your question kind of hit on that for me too. What are you using to identify and um, the accuracy of that and um, yeah. And things like that, but yeah, great presentation. I, I would right. love to sit and talk about that for a while, but I don't think. All right, no, to. you are not. <laughs> no, okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much, George. <laughs> nice. All right, it looks like the slides maybe are still a little bit sticky. I'm, I'm, I don't know what's you at the end there. He was pressing, and so just a little heads up in the back of the room. Uh, I have no idea what's going on technically, so if there's a lag. Okay, so. Just press and, and be cool or keep pressing? Press and be cool, because it's going to happen, right? You just need to chill. All right, so this is Alex, uh, CEO of Relato. Uh, four minutes, and I guess start. Yeah, go for it. So uh, You can see live interactive version of this thing in case you're having issues right there in the shirt URL. Um, so. Every B2B marketer relies on PDFs to get their most important messages across. In fact, there's $11 billion worth of documents consumed the exact same way today as they were before the internet. Relate to takes those static assets and turns them into interactive and measurable experiences in a few clicks. The problem with the enterprise document, like a PDF, is that it's a virtual piece of paper invented for printing 30 years ago. When I was running marketing and sales ops at SuccessFactors, 40% of our budget went to create these things that weren't differentiated. They weren't shareable on mobiles properly. And they certainly weren't helping us win because we didn't give us any data. But that was the only alternative because the other one was a, hey, let's go build a fancy microsite with all these fancy tools and five different teams to get together. So Relate2 to, takes the simplicity of a document and marries it with the power of the web. In fact, you can have your PDF and have an interactive experience at the same time. Here's how a customer Accenture uses it. They take nine months to produce this report. It looks like this, literally, hundreds of pages, you know, assets everywhere. We turn it into something like this for them in a few clicks. So it was video navigation. How do we do it? Three steps. Add, um, add, add your PDF into the Relay2 to SaaS tool. In a few clicks, we automatically extract animation, navigation. You could add interactivity in videos. Then, if the clicker works, since you have an awesome experience, you want to actually share that experience across multiple channels. And so every page becomes a smart URL. So you can actually maximize the value of that engaging experience. And then lastly, you can get deep analytics about who engages with what so you can continue to get win deals, but actually also improve your content and start driving better content decisions. Outcome 100 times more powerful than a PDF, 10 times faster to do than a website for our clients at Accenture, including Accenture Digital. Now, we, while we're starting with marketing, you could imagine that every team and every enterprise is actually cranking out these things, right? Uh, sales leave behinds. So you could sell when you're not in the room. Customer guides, employee education. All told, we see $11 billion opportunity around the last mile. That's the content that touches your audience. Um, and the ROI so far in the marketing is looking pretty good. So anything from across the top of the funnel, getting more stuff in so you could get SEO juice and just get exposure to your ideas, down to engaging the visitors for Salesforce, call to actions to drive behavioral change, and we're particularly excited about the win rate increase. We just went uh, live with the recurring product this year. And we're really excited to see the trend that is starting to spread within the enterprise. And, um, and also, we, we're excited that some of the leading brands like Accenture, like Salesforce, are starting to trust us. Um, and you know, things are going to get much easier for us once we release self-serve, which is really the, the amazing part. And that's what we're working on here. So you could see. Um, <laughs> All right, let's go. So um, what's unique about our, our model right now is that we've got under the same roof ability to really understand the structure of the document and augment it, right? And then feedback loop to actually real engagement with that audience. That's really, really hard to do. These are all separate things before. And so one, while we're getting that ready, 
the, the long-term vision is that you could actually recommend on the fly what the ideal outcome will be for that asset. And you know, we fortunately, there's sh way more PDFs than web pages, right? So 10,000 times as many. So this is really powerful for us. So my co-founder is, um, is, is a genius. You heard about my experience. Like He's got grants. Uh, ran his own interactive e-learning startup. We're backed by former CEO of DocuSign, co-founder CTO of SuccessFactors. Our customers, early customers, are winning AI, a, a creative and marketing awards with okay, this. Okay, Alex. So there you go. You got a few more seconds for the sticky slides there. Um, sticky slides, there you yeah, go. Yeah, right. we got some sticky slides. All right. uh, so the plan for the slides, one click, chillax. That's how it works. Okay, two minutes for the feedback. All right, who would like to go first? I do have the benefit of meeting you before the panel, but um, so uh, I definitely like the market size. I think that it's a huge problem because ebooks are terrible and they're like very, very widely shared. I think the question I have is are there bulk import from a CMS and how many, and can you import hundreds of documents, let's say from a, uh, you know, your CMS system, whatever you're using to store your ebooks, like if you pulled in from Spring CM or something like that, like can you just do that automatically is the question. Yeah, we're building out the API right now. Um, it's, you know, it's work in progress. But some of our customers that are most interested have thousands of documents, right? yeah, because yeah. they like they can't process that at all. So like we find that it's a really unique thing where you get one document that you want to be like a sugar candy, and then for that one, there's ten to twelve that are just like just API or upload it and get the auto magic going. So that's that's the, the sweet spot for us. Cool. And the, the documents that you're uploading, what is the like failure rate that you can actually convert them into a real microsite, if you're going from PDF to microsite? So, so there's two problems. Problem one, just getting PDFs to work is actually an incredibly hard technical problem. Second, on that, um, it's about, it, it's, if it's a marketing document, it's much better to, be, to get an engaging experience from that, which is why we're starting with marketers. Uh, the others are much more about finding the right content and sharing it and getting analytics. Cool, thanks. All right, 30 seconds. So, you know, clearly larger opportunity. I think PDFs are a pain in the ass, but uh, there have been a lot of people that have tried some variation of this for at least a decade. And so the, the open <laughs> question is, how do you onboard customers and how do you actually make it so easy that people come by themselves? I mean, it feels that you're going top down and my instinct is this is much more of a bottom up sell. Uh, but again, I may just be wrong and you're going to market. We're mid, mid. Okay, we got 10 seconds. Close, but good. Go ahead, yeah, last one. Uh, yeah, good presentation. And I think the uh, the question I had was around PDF itself. You know, so you know we saw what happened with Flash, and you know, so, so the question is, how much are you dependent on PDF, and whether you become a standard technology or whether this becomes a niche that you know nobody else takes on. You don't have to answer it, but that was the the question I had in my mind. Okay, Great thank questions. you, thank Alex. You. Alex, before you go. Yeah. You gotta get uh, at least a one bonus point for that T-shirt. Yeah, I mean, look at check that out. <laughs> bonus point for the T-shirt. All right. I started my career at Salesforce, so. Yeah. That's <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Good job. All right. So, uh, Amrit, are you okay? Okay. In, ca in case you didn't hear, there's a there's a lag. Just press once, and and relax because you're very relaxed right now, right? <laughs> Everyone's always relaxed when they have to do a four minute pitch. Okay, uh, Metonic Systems, we ready to go? It's all set up? All right, good luck. Hi, my name is Amrit, and I'm with Metonic Systems. Um, we've all seen the headlines. Uh, oh, okay, it's a little bit lag. So we're actually bringing AI into engineering design space. Um, we've all seen the headlines where AI has been doing fantastic in terms of playing different kind of games, um, you know, being showing superhuman capabilities in terms of what it can accomplish. Um, and we think many of the engineering design processes today can benefit from what has been accomplished in the game space. So, and we're especially uh, excited about what uh, single player games uh, have been able to do. So I'm sure you might have seen this, that an AI agent was able to learn from scratch to uh, finish a Rubik's Cube in less than two seconds. And you can see, the, I don't know if you can see it, there's a, a, a light uh, sentence below the main headline which says, sometimes below 20 moves. So it's just amazing what, what AI agents have been able to accomplish. So we think engineering design is a similar type of scenario where uh, similar to single, game, uh, single player games, 
And we think similar performance gain is also attainable when it comes to certain areas of uh, engineering design. Um, when we especially want to bring this into the hardware design space. So all these different areas can definitely benefit from that kind of performance. And our goal is to bring a lot higher agility into the hardware design process, similar to what a lot of software development processes have today. And our current focus area is the printed circuit board. Because printed circuit board is what goes into all electronic products. But the process of actually designing the printed circuit board is very uh, manual today, very time consuming, very costly, and is very rigid. So our goal is to transform that into a very flexible, you know, a lot more iterative and a lot faster process. Um, so who are we? Um, I'm Amrit. Uh, my co-founder, Carlos, is also here. We've worked together in multiple startups before. Uh, we worked in one of the startup. We were key contributors in, in a startup, which was acquired by Broadcom. Um, so this is how a printed circuit board looks like. This is what it is. All electronic products have them. Basically, you know, your, your phones to you name it, from the cars to medical devices to satellites, like you name it. I mean, it, it's there, right? However, the actual components and the connections in there are laid down by hand today. The software tools do exist, but the tools are used to actually do the process, go through the process in a very heavily manual way. And some of the, ooh, let me go back. And some of the complex specific designs can take over three months, you know, sometimes even six months. Some companies have 24 seven operations just to do this. Um, how big is this problem? It's massive, right? It's all over the place, like I said. And it's, it's you know, predicted to, to be like close to 90 billion, and just the software market itself is four billion, it's everywhere. So how are we accomplishing this? So we're actually turning this into a game plane, right? We're generating the PCV automatically. And it's a design service platform that we're bringing to market and will reduce the actual design of the boards from months to less than a day. In some cases, within hours. So it's transformative type of technology that we're talking about here that will allow us to literally transform the way electronics are, products are designed. And you know, we have background, both of us founders, in chip design and also system designs. We've been on high-end software and systems. And we've been working on this for, uh, for almost a year now. And uh, we have actually proof of concept already done. Um, we have multiple IPs coming through the process. And we're also connected with a few customers. And we're raising our first external round. Thank you. And that's my email address if you're interested. All right, great job. <clears throat> A bonus point for finishing exactly on, on four minutes. That's incredible. OK. <laughs> Great. Uh, where's Caitlin? Did she, oh, you're, are you running the? OK. Two minutes for feedback. Please go ahead. Can I go first? Yep. Go ahead. Um, good presentation. Um, so I guess one, one piece of feedback would be for you. You, you know, it's always difficult to know where your audience is and when, where you want to start. Right? And so I think starting with where PCBs are is not useful because you know, if people don't know what PCBs are, they're not going to fund you. <laughs> and and if, they, if they know what PCBs are, they know something about the creation of it. So I'd, I'd rather start with EDA and kind of why this is AI for EDA and why that's an important uh, innovation. And I think there's a lot more technology you can actually include in your, in your presentation because the key question is, you know, this, people know it's hard stuff and it, it delineating what's new and what AI can do versus other techniques would be useful. Um, yeah, but that's, that was my, you know, great. Good, Thank you. great application, but yeah, that's my feedback. You know, my, my sense is I had questions around market size. I mean, I sort of was at Cadence many, many years ago, and Cadence has been doing, applying statistical techniques, you know, and the line between statistical and AI techniques is, is, is pretty blurred to this problem for 20 years. And it's still a $100, $200 million business for Cadence 20 years later. So. Uh, at least for me, it wasn't obvious that this is a big market. Oh yeah, I, I just have one question. So, can the software optimize like the construction of the PCB board based on for like heat or for size? Like, are you opt so like the the the, the customer can like optimize based on those characteristics? Absolutely, it's yeah. actually about something like size, right? Let's say we're designing an electronics product, mm -hmm. and currently it's set once and then design, and that's it, right? What we allow is you can change the shape of the board, or the you know your enclosure might change, and then you get to come back and change the re and then reoptimize. Re and then yeah. that's the whole agility we're bringing to the process. Cool, thank you. All right, ten seconds. Anyone want to give a, one last final piece of 
Uh, time's up. Okay. Thank you so much. Great job. Um, is, yeah. yeah, sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you very Great much. Great job. All right. Thank you. Uh, is Greg? Okay, Greg. All right. Fantastic. Uh, Co-founder of Settle Medical. I'll let you pronounce your name. How's that? Sounds good. <laughs> there you go. I've messed up enough names already. This, okay, so four minutes, here. great. Good luck. Thanks, everyone. So my name is Greg Zaharchuk. I want to talk about medical imaging. Medical imaging has been a breakthrough technology over the past 30 years or so, and it's essential for us to be able to look inside the human body. But one of the problems it has, as many of you know, is it's quite costly, it's often rationed, and it's very inefficient. For example, an MRI takes about 45 minutes to do, hard for patients to tolerate that sometimes, and certainly expensive for the use of the machine. So uh, my company that I'm going to be talking about is Subtle Medical, and our goal is to use AI to fix this problem. And to try to understand that, I want to talk about the radiology workflow. It usually starts from the acquisition of a scan here on the left and works its way over to diagnosis. And a lot of the press in AI has been to replace radiologists. I heard someone just mention that a few minutes ago. Um, that may be a very good uh, use, but I think a really interesting use is to look at the upstream applications because, you know, to be able to increase image quality and productivity is important because 80% of the cost of imaging is in acquiring the image, not paying the radiologist. So this is our team. I started this uh, company about two years ago along with my graduate student, Enhal Gong, who's now CEO. Uh, and we've been lucky to put together a good team uh, over the last couple of years uh, as shown here. The technology we're using is uh, convolutional neural networks. And the basic idea is we can go faster with imaging because we can take noisier images, lower resolution images, and lower radiation dose images, and train a neural network to predict a high quality image that's diagnostic. So these are our technologies. Our first product is called Subtle Pet, and this is for a modality called positron emission tomography. Uh, this is a technique in which you inject a radio tracer into the body, and it's usually used uh, to detect cancer. Uh, so we've shown that we can reduce scan time by up to fourfold, and this was recently cleared by the FDA uh, and is actually in clinical use today. Uh, currently under FDA uh, submission is a product called Subtle MR, which does the same thing for MR, and this is important because MR is used 10 times more frequently than PET. Uh, much more common examination, but same basic idea. Go faster, use the machine more efficiently. And then finally, we're interested in safety. So we have a product looking at reducing MRI contrast injection. Some of you may know that gadolinium uh, is thought to be toxic to the human body. And we're looking at methods to reduce dose by up to 90% uh, and still have diagnostic images. Longer term vision, we're very interested in moving into the pharmaceutical space. Uh, clinical trials, as you know, are very expensive and use a lot of imaging. Uh, and we can use the technologies I've described to reduce those costs directly. Better patient comfort, shorter scans can reduce patient dropout. We can potentially do additional scans uh, now because scans are going to be cheaper uh, to detect early changes. And then finally, we're very interested in kind of the technologies that deep learning can um, allow, particularly things like harmonizing data across different scanners. Every scanner is different, and when data comes from different scanners, it's very challenging. So using something like style transfer to make all scanners look similar is one of our goals. And then finally, the last and most exciting thing to me as a radiologist is, you know, we're talking about taking low quality images and predicting high quality images at the same time. But why don't we think about maybe we could use similar technology to predict an image that's going to occur in the future, right? So, you know, based on the image I see now and maybe some of the demographics of the patient, can I predict who is going to be a fast progressor and who you might want to enroll into your clinical trial? So I hope I've convinced you Subtle Medical's goal is to create value for all the stakeholders here, uh, for patients who like faster scans, for doctors who want new use cases, for imaging facilities to be able to use their equipment more efficiently, uh, and for pharmaceutical companies to improve clinical trials. So thank you very much. Another one exactly four minutes. Great job. OK, so let's do two minutes of uh, feedback. Okay. Awesome. So a quick question, like the last part about predicting mm -hmm. who's moving fast is very, very fascinating. Uh, I wonder if you can do that for existing images already and, and sort of like use that as a go-to market because that seems like a very compelling value proposition without having to get adoption for your technology uh, across the board. Uh, to look at older clinical trials, for example? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and I think that's a good way to demonstrate value, certainly. I mean, existing clinical trials are great data, uh, for example. And, you know, one idea is to train models with different treatments. And if you can train different models for different treatments, you can see how an individual patient will behave with different treatments. So to me, that's very revolutionary. Um, great presentation. I think it covered pretty much everything around the team, the market, the value prop. Um, the only thing I didn't really see is much around the actual finan financials and the value that you that's implicit there. I would love to just see, learn more about the actual size of the market or the cost of the technology or how you're actually, um, how much revenue you're actually getting from some, selling the technology. So more around the financials, what I would love to see. But. Sure, so you know, in the US alone, you do 35 million MRIs a year. Each one costs about $1,000. So it's a $35 billion market in the US alone. Uh, individual imaging centers often have to make the decision to buy new technology or to use their existing technology. So if you can actually s increase your productivity by about 20%, that's about a $5 million win for your average imaging center. So the business model for us is to take a, you know, a return on investment on that savings for them. Oh, I've got 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. right. I, I had a similar question, which is, would you have to go through existing um, MRI or PET scan vendors, and this would be an add-on product, mm -hmm. uh, or is it something that is deployable directly by the lab? Great question. So. Uh, it's, this is basically cloud software, so the idea is to sit between the scanner uh, where the images are produced and the PAC system where we, people read the images. So we try to be seamless to the, uh, to the, uh, to the user. And the goal is really to make it um, available to all vendor, all types of machines. Um, okay, working great. with OEMs is also possible. All right, thank you very much, fantastic Thanks. job. Uh, great job, thank, thank you. Uh, that was a great job for uh, all five of our gladiators this evening. All right, so what's going to happen now? The judges are going to convene. They're convening. Look, they're convening already. Um, while they do that, my understanding is that some past winners are going to come up and take a victory lap, <laughs> right? And a picture. Uh, and a picture, right? Are you... From last year. Come on up. Uh, introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Zhao Shi Yuan. I am the AI idol of last year. Uh, I, my company's name is Cop Proven Skincare. Last year, when I was standing on the stage, my co founder and I were fresh out of Y Combinator. We had some data on the beauty space. Um, we had a big dream where we want to use, we want to create a smarter, consumer packaged goods company via personalization uh, from millions of consumer feedbacks on the products that are available in the market. And we decided to take a crack at the beauty space where the market is not really smart, data was not used, but there were tons and tons of data. Today, um, we have already collected more than 25 million consumer reviews on information over 100,000 products, 20,000 ingredients, and more than 4,000 scientific journal papers in the skincare space. Um, we can uh, precisely decide the combination of the ingredients that's suitable for a particular human beings in a particular environment and for the exact season, for the ethnicity group, for your skin concern, your skin expectation, and so on and so forth. Um, we have tested the market, one final sentence, uh, really important for the update. We have tested market, launched our own skincare um, for more than, and served more than 3,000 customers. We beat the industry average on the NPS, the NPS score, which is the net promoter score by tenfold, and we have uh, created more than 45% of repurchase rate, and the industry average is uh, below 5%. Okay, thank you. I uh, should, thank you very much, and I remember your presentation from last year. Thanks. That was the, uh, uh, it was a fantastic presentation. Thank and you. I also remember the technical problem right in the middle. We had to. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I heard it's the click, whole. It's same problem. The whole thing just cracked, and we had to start Clicker. all over from the very beginning. But you really, you really swung the bat hard there. So, so great job. Thank you. Um, we got one. Uh, do we want her to stay here, or what's the plan? Yeah, go ahead okay. and stay. I'll, I'll step on the side. Yeah, have a seat. How's that? Okay. <laughs> Sitting on the door. Oh, you can have my mic. Oh. Or you could take that mic. There you go. Go ahead. Hello everyone, my name's uh, Sanjay Jawar. I'm the co-founder and president of Realware. 
Uh, we won the um, AI Idol two years ago in 2017. Uh, we make uh, industrial head-mounted wearable computers that are 100% hands-free, primarily driven by very noise-robust voice. Uh, when we were here uh, two years ago, uh, we had just about achieved a million dollars of revenue with selling pre-production prototypes. Um, subsequently, we raised our Series A round in January of 2018 after having done about $4 million of angel funding as convertible notes. The A round uh, eventually tapped out at uh, $20 million. We just completed our B round in July of this year. It was another $80 million, 25 debt, 55 equity. Uh, this, uh, so where we, we uh, had prototypes that were almost in production at the time that we presented here, uh, we were able to do $2 million of revenue in 2017, $12 million of revenue in 2018, $13.5 million up to June 30th of this year, and I feel we're on track to do somewhere between $30 and $35 million this year. Our business oper operates at 63% gross margin. We expect to be profitable by the end of Q1 next year. We've built a cloud. We have 1,200 uh, enterprise customers in 55 countries, 130 people. Um, and no traditional VCs in our cap table, which is a big surprise to me. Um, so uh, where we're going from here is continuing to work with global thousand companies on their digital transformation initiatives in all kinds of industries from automotive to manufacturing to oil and gas to wind power uh, uh, to uh, logistics, you name it. And uh, we're continuing to grow our cloud, which already has 300 enterprise customers on it, and start to monetize that. And finally, we are going to get to do some AI. <laughs> Uh, so we have a couple of projects underway. One is an uh, image recognition project, uh, working with a company called Latent AI, spin out of SRI, uh, that lets us do edge-based um, inference in a very constrained uh, type of device, like the Snapdragon device here, uh, and do so uh, on a customer-specific, industrial customer-specific basis, looking at things like uh, different, different assets and different types of pumps and motors and other things that you have at companies like ExxonMobil. Okay. And uh, uh, we're going forward from there. Okay, Thanks. good job. When you are an AI, yeah, great job. When you're an AI idol winner, you don't need slides. You can just, you can just pitch. I'm gonna give one update for oh. another first AI company. Uh, just gonna give a quick update for another company, past participant of AI idol that could not be here. Um, this is on behalf of Skyline.ai. So following the event, our company, so this is a real estate investment firm powered by AI. Following the event, our company has definitely seen lots of progress. At the same trip, a couple of MIT alums who now run JLL Spark, which is JLL's prop tech oriented VC, have met with Orr Hilch, who's the founder, and decided to invest in their Series A. Since then, they've raised $25 million in seed and A funding and have partnered with some of the world's largest real estate investment managers, such as DWS, which is $700 billion in real estate, that's a lot of money, and JLL and more to deploy AI-powered real estate investment funds. Um, all in all, this is the third year of the conference. In the past two years, the winners of AI Idol have gone on to uh, raise over $200 million. So keep an eye on these guys, keep an eye on the participants. These people are doing big things. Thank you. All right. Okay, wow. All right, so we've got some fabulous past winners and we have a new winner. The results are in. So it was close, but we do have a winner, and the judges are pleased to announce that Subtle Systems is the new AI idol of 2019. Uh, as, um, go ahead, come on up. You gotta, you gotta get your prize. You got the. It's not an ashtray. It's fantastic, <laughs> because nobody smokes, but. It's a candy, it's a candy, it's a wonderful candy. Is yeah. Sure. No, we have our own in Palo Yeah, yeah, so, but I, I love um, this so I'm really excited. Yeah, well, we're gonna do a photo? What are we gonna do? All right. Wow. And, and the, tit the Titan, the, the bag with the Titan uh, uh, 5 in it.